What's up, everybody? I'm Tam. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure you descri describe. How about you subscribe so that you can find my channel again? Because if you don't, you may never find my channel again because it's difficult to find. So today we're going to talk about that phrase. Have you ever heard men, and maybe men are a little bit more politically correct than they used to be, but it was always known that men were more objective and women were more feeling. And yes, that's somewhat stereotypical, but if you look at personality types and traits, 75% of men are objective, 75% of women are subjective. So there's some truth to that dynamic. So men might be more prone to say F a feeling. Like, I don't want to be driven by a feeling. I don't want to be make decisions based on a feeling. If you have to hire and fire somebody, it helps if you can put your personal feelings aside and look objectively and not like, well, this lady needs a job really bad and she's got four children, so I better give her this job or I don't want to fire her because she's got four children and how is she going to feed them? An objective person is going to say, I understand all of that. And a non-narcissist will say, I have compassion for this person. I do understand that that might be difficult, but she stole from the register and she doesn't complete her task. She's on the phone for four or five hours a day while everyone else is working. So I've got to fire her. Or they look at her resume and say, well, you know what? I'm looking for somebody with different qualities and different traits. So I'm not going to hire this person. So that's where it comes in handy. But if women were objective all the time, think about the nurturing that it takes to raise a baby. Your The estrogen comes in and it makes you check on your baby and is the baby okay? And they're crying and oh, they're hungry and I'm bonding with them and I'm, I care and my feelings are important because if, if I didn't have my feelings coming forth and it was just F a feeling like I don't want my baby to cry, then we would have a world full of narcissists and borderlines because you gotta be caring and nurturing and be tuned in emotionally to the needs of a baby. So it's good to have both, you know, somebody in the house who's more objective about things and somebody who's more subjective about things. So to totally say F a feeling and dismiss it and disregard it can be a huge issue. I was watching a video. I'll give you a clue. It's a gemstone that is white. It comes out of an oyster. And that is part of the person's name. And this woman has made it her calling to put down women, degrade women, say everything that men do is correct and right. And women are just so wrong. And I'm thinking, are you... An this is not meant to be frivolous. I probably shouldn't say that, but it makes me wonder, is she attracted to women? And th and that's why she's going after them so hard. What kind of parenting did she get from her mother? Was there a bonding that took place? She often says, well, my dad kind of tells me to have a feeling like, so there's a group of men who would say, forget a feeling that are actually compassionate and caring when it comes to the needs of people, the homeless, caring about somebody who's just gone through a tragedy versus a narcissist who really doesn't give a flying fig. They struggle with empathy. And so this person also, to me, shows some difficulty with 
with showing feelings. And if her mother wasn't, didn't bond with her the way that she did, she might have some anger towards women on a subconscious level. And sometimes that can also equal to attraction to a woman and you're coming after them because you're angry at them. Because some of the things that she says just don't make sense at all. So her whole mantra is finding ways to put women down at every corner. And she works very hard at this. You have to spend a lot of energy to find anything anybody says about a woman that's positive. She's going to find something negative to try to put them down, make them look stupid. She said that the majority of teachers are women and that teachers have caused education to spiral downward. And she said that teachers have a lower IQ than most people. So when you put all that together, she's saying she's found another creative way to say that women are dumb, women aren't smart, they aren't intelligent, they are causing the education system to go down. Why? Because the majority of teachers are women. And so that's a bad thing. You see how creative some people with, I will say, narcissistic tendencies can be, they're not going to just say little simple things like, I hate women or I don't like women. They're not going to do that. They're going to be much smarter than that. There is a famous singer who did not want any other females to be on any type of platform or anything with her because she saw other women as a threat. So it's like, I have to be the star. I have to be in the limelight. And there's just anger and rage towards other women because I can't be compared to them. I have to stand out. I have to be the best one. Looking at other women as competition or they make me feel bad about myself. So some of these can be indicators that you have a narcissist in the ring so it's one hand to be like what I described in the beginning, objectivity and, and not giving as much credence to feelings for the sake of making objective decisions. That's one thing. But then there's this group of people who want to say, well, forget feelings like this therapist, famous therapist that I know. She always wants to disregard feelings. And when you're in therapy, the majority of it is about feelings, how you feel, what's going on in your mind, what emotion, the emotions are what drive a lot of people to therapy. So to say, I don't want to talk about your feelings, put your feelings aside. We don't care about your feelings. It's just some indicators of narcissism. Like you want to give people advice. Everything is confrontational. Confrontation is a therapeutic, um, something you can use in therapy to help people to see contradictions or, or where they're going wrong or to, to kind of change their frame of mind. But when you're heavy on the con the confrontation, when that is like 80% of your therapy session is confrontation, yelling at your client, putting them down, the person is in very black and white thinking. So if somebody is trying to find a solution that is gray, because that is more of a healthy way of thinking, then they get in trouble with the therapist because you have to think in black and white. It's either a yes or it's a no. There's nothing in between. And it's like, yeah, but this teenager is having some issues. And I can't just say, well, they're going to either stay or I'm going to put them out. How about I try to work with them on their behavior and help them mature and grow, you know? But no, mm -mm. it has to be yes or no. It's that splitting black and white. Those are indications of narcissism and lack of empathy for people, but yet you're giving them advice and, and these people are in these positions where they do a lot of damage to people. So 
it's just something for you guys to think about. Should you disregard feelings? And in what context does the person mean mean it? Is it a healthy, objective context? Or is it a, I'm a narcissist and I don't do empathy because I don't understand it. It's icky. And please don't make me go there. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. And definitely check out my book, The Workplace of Narcissist. And also my book, Flip the Script on Love, that will help you with relationships to heal yourself and develop healthy relationships. The other one helps you to learn about narcissists and how to deal with them because we can't always get away from them. And thank you guys so much for watching my video and just hearing my thoughts. I really appreciate it. And I love hearing your thoughts as well. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye, my lovelies.